Hello, hi guys. Um, I forgot to record the Zoom meeting, so I'm gonna just redo this on my own. Um, but yeah, this is for Engineering Design Project One. This is our second lecture, and where we're gonna be talking about brainstorming. Um, before we start, uh, I just wanted to check on the teams. Um, so this is the teams that I have. Uh, we talked about earlier in class. Um, but working with Dr. Nayak is Romela, Lauren, and Justine. I talked with you earlier, and possibly you will be doing the same project but separately. So I will talk to Dr. Nayak about that to get that cleared up. Uh, Danny and John, you're working on a drone project to sense marine mammals. Uh, Ernesto and Alyssa, you're working on, um, uh, on paper, but actually uh, you, you told me later that it's a uh, the COVID-19 tracking system. Nick, I'm assuming you're working on your own. I just saw your email that you missed class, so this is really for you and John and Romelo who were able to attend live. Um, and Sarah, I also talked to you. Um, you're working on your own and you're gonna pick one of your projects. Okay, so otherwise, the other thing I want to talk about is mine participation. So I mentioned this in class. Uh, their first meeting is on September 14th. That's a really great opportunity, especially for, uh, since it's for medical innovation and design, it's especially a good opportunity for your these B, you BME students. Um, it's going to be done all virtually, so John, you're free to participate. They meet in the evenings, though, so that could be a little bit trying as far as the uh, time zones go. Uh, but it's not only open to engineering majors. You can have friends from other majors. It doesn't have to be junior level, senior level. You guys can... Um, if you have friends who are just freshmen who are interested in joining, uh, feel free to let them know. I'll try to advertise this to the rest of the university. I have to figure that out. Um, but yeah, if you want, sign up on your own. Uh, if you do sign up, let me know. It's, it's just interesting to know who's participating. Um, so yeah, Mind is really great. It's cool if you want to participate. Um, so first of all, the first question is, what's an engineer? Uh, you guys are all training to become engineers. Um, you took Engineering 1000, hopefully you have some idea of what they are. Um, because if you don't, maybe it's a good time to think about it now. You're halfway through your degree. Um, if we look in the dictionary, uh, the noun engineering is the activities or functions of an engineer. It's sort of a circular definition. If you look up engineer, you also see something similar. Um, someone who practices engineering, right? It's very, it's very true, but also not very informative. Uh, second definition is more informative, the application of science mathematics uh, by which the properties of matter and sources of energy in nature are made useful to people, right? So uh, taking what we know about science and math <clears throat> and then mm, harnessing that power or transforming it into something that's useful for people. Or it's the design and manufacture of complex products. Um, so really what does it mean to be an engineer? There's all different kinds of engineers too. There's chemical engineers, there are um, what else is there? chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, there's people like you, electrical engineers, and biomedical engineers. Um, all work on different aspects of science and math, um, but they all are called engineers. Uh, why are they called engineers? Because they take part in this design and manufacturing of complex part products or things that are made useful to people. Uh, how do engineers do this? Uh, it's called the engineering design process. This is so integral to engineering that it's often that it has the name engineering in it, right? And if you look up online, there's a lot of different ways that this is uh, sort of uh, told to people, right? There's a there's steps and there's a cycle, right? So there's commonalities. The steps people designate might are a little bit different. Uh, this one's from NASA. This one's from a teachengineering.org. Um, this from a different teacher and so on, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can you can break this down. Um, I'm gonna throw my hat into the ring too and give you how I break it down. Um, maybe it's not the best way, you can break it down a different way too. Uh, but step one, right, the first step is this, what is the problem specifically, right? So this is a very, very important part of the design process. If you can define your problem really well, you have the solution already, right? based on what the, uh, you just come up with solutions to fulfill these requirements, right? So if you can define your problem super specifically, great, you're done, um, right? Or you're almost done, maybe I'd say you're halfway done. You still need to actually come up with a solution and test them and make sure it works. 
Um, all right, so first problem, define your problem. What is it specifically? Figure out from uh, the market, your customer, what they need, what they want. Uh, and then you have to, in step two, come up with ideas to meet these needs, right? Maybe not be so straightforward. Um, so come up with some ideas and then build and test these ideas that you come up with, the best ones, right? And then evaluate if these things that you made actually work. If they don't, go back and try and improve upon it, right? This is the iterative process of the design process. If it doesn't solve the problem that I was supposed to do, uh, figure out why it didn't, go back and try and fix it again, or try a different solution, right? Uh, so that's the design process in a nutshell. Um, one thing about this process is, like you saw here, there's a lot of different ways it can be written out. Um, and there's no, uh, there are some formal processes, but one of the main ones is from the federal government, right? They have this very well-defined um, steps of reviews, right? Government has a lot of bureaucracy and that's not always the best thing. It makes things take a lot of time. Um, but there's a lot of good things about having these documentations well-defined and have to be filled out because they help organize things and make things more agile for iterative and you can look back and see how far you've come, right? Um, so there's a lot of different steps and a lot of different milestones in this process and reviews that need to be done. Um, first milestone is where we want to get to today and so you can do most of uh, the second milestone for this class, right? Uh, this technology development, prototyping, and then designing your system. Uh, that's what we want to do this first semester. Second semester, we want you to work on engineering, manufacturing, development. So actually getting uh, your product ready to be potentially deployed onto the market, right? We're not going to, I don't think we'll make you deploy your things. That's a, that's a whole other step. Um, but that's what we want you to get next semester. So for this semester, the midterm goal is to get you here, um, the system requirements review, right? Um, and then for the end of the semester, we want you to get to the preliminary design review. We will talk more about this review process next week. Uh, today, we're over here in this, um, what is the problem and what are you trying to solve, right? Um, so how can we summarize this more broadly? We're in the ask, research, and imagine phase, right? Um, so at this step, what you guys should be doing is uh, first think about your problem, the general area, and then write down what you know about this, right? Um, and then write down what you need to or want to know about this too. Um, also, the research part is what else has been done before. So um, there are a lot of problems in the world. Some of them already have solutions. Some of them don't. Um, or some of them have solutions that aren't that great. In any case, it's important to look at these pre-existing solutions um, as it will help you. It will either help inform what you need to do or it could help give you ideas. Um, it also gives you ideas in terms of marketing, like how is this fit into the market and how can you market this and get it out to people. Like, If it's just a very incremental improvement, maybe it's not worth pursuing. Um, Second, uh, or after you get all of this, you can sort of start to define what the specific problems or needs are that you're trying to uh, trying to meet. Um, and then the next step where you start to get into the design actual aspect or thinking of what are some possible solutions. Okay. So um, for this class, what we want to do is uh, we want to go through an example. I don't want this to be the exact, exact project, but it's something that's very near and dear to all of our hearts nowadays is um, due to COVID-19, there's a lot of things that we can't do. One of them is going out and seeing a bunch of our family and friends. So maybe we're feeling lonely. I know I am a little bit, right? So let's consider this as our problem that we're going to try and apply our design process to as we go through uh, these next few weeks to see how it, how it works, right? Um, so before that, an important step is we need to be able to sort of start thinking of these ideas. How do you answer them, right? Um, creativity and innovation is a huge part of the design process, and it's not something very easy to do. Um, I asked you earlier to watch these IDEO videos. Hopefully you did. Um, during the class, we talked about what people learn from IDEO, right? What did you guys learn from these videos? Some things that people said was... Um, uh, 
the way that they did innovation was not like any corporate structure. There was no like big boss. Everyone was sort of equal, right? Everyone was equal, so there was no shame in sharing ideas, and ideas could flow freely, right? And they encourage wild ideas and chaos in the beginning, right? The, the very important thing is they didn't shoot any any ideas down, right? No matter how far fetched they seem, um, they left it up there to explore, right? So that's how it starts. You start off very broad, very open. Don't don't close out any ideas, right? Explore all possibilities, sort of thing. So you start with that and keep going with your uh, with these ideas, and then you um, go to some refinement, right? And then you start building, um, right? So IDEO is a great. Uh, they have this design thinking philosophy, and it's something that's used in a lot of different corporations around the world. Um, important part of this is the first step is this brainstorming of trying to have these wild ideas and things like that. So, uh, how do we do brainstorming nowadays? Um, like this class and so many other things, things that are moving to online. So, uh, though you may be able to meet with your team in person and maybe put post-its on a whiteboard or draw a map or a bunch of piece of paper, uh, maybe you can't do that anymore right now. So there's some different tools. The first one is Google Docs. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it already. Um, or you can make a document, you can write down different parts of it, like what do we know, um, what do we want to know, and then people can join it, right? You can have, you can share it, share it with the link. Um, I'll show the link here. Uh, right, you can share the link. I think in class I forgot to make it unrestricted. You share the link, people can write down what they know about uh, these different things. And you can just keep adding to wherever you want to add. Um, that's Google Docs. Another very useful tool is Miro. So I talked about this in class. Uh, it's a free service up for up to three boards. Uh, go to Miro.com, make an account, log in. Um, and then once you log in, you get to this page here. Um, you can create a new board. I already made one here. Uh, actually, I'll make a new board for this. So I'll make a new board, uh, create a share board. I'm not sponsored by Miro in any way. Uh, it's just the tool that I found that seems to be very helpful, right? So this is Miro. There's a bunch of different templates you can see. Uh, if you want to know more about them, what these templates look like, you can click on Show Preview. It gives a short description here, and if you want to add it in, you can add in a filled one or a blank, and just work from it from there. It's really uh, very user friendly. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to add one yet. The first thing I will do is I will add a frame. So frames are really important because when you print out your PDF, if you want to save this, um, this is what gets printed out for each page, each page of the frame. So I'm going to make this first one here. Let's make it a little big so we can put a lot of stuff in it. Um, and I, you can rename it. So let me name it something, uh, mind map, or let's say brainstorm. Okay. Uh, so you can hear it brainstorm and then we can put whatever we want in here. So if we want to use a mind map, we can go to templates, which is this button here. Uh, click on mind map and we can click. Uh, let's add a filled example this time. Right? So we add a filled example. Uh, we can make it smaller. Um, and then you can edit things, right? So I can edit whatever words I want here. If I want to add another link, add another link and say um, Zoom parties or something, right? Zoom parties. And then from here, you can add different Zoom parties that you know, right? Like uh, uh, board games, right? Something like that. Oop, I made a square. Let me get rid of this. All right, so you can, make, you can type everything like this. If you want to add sticky notes, just like you would on a whiteboard, you can add sticky notes here. And you can type whatever you want. Um, Another great thing is this is, like Google Docs, it's a live document, so you can share between people and interact. Uh, oh, let me title this. I'll title it test. Save. Um, and then you can copy an invite link, invite someone else who has a Miro account, and then they can come in, and you guys can put things on boards at the same time. You can see it live popping up and whatnot. Um, also, if you want to share, oh, wait. If you want to print it, you click on this export board, and you can save as PDF, image, um, various things. So Mirror is a really great tool. Uh, 
even if you're working solo, I think it's very helpful. Um, something that you can use. Mm, you can put in links from the web too and save your resources, YouTube videos, things like that. So that is Miro. Uh, there are some other tools here on tallyfy.com, brainstorming tools. If you want to explore them, feel free. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, here from here on in the class, I broke the class up into groups and we talked, I talked to each individually to check out on how things were going. Um, basically, you guys should have done your homework one um, where you sort of outline what you think you want to do. And so then I came in, uh, I wanted to check on what everybody team is doing, what, what each team is doing. Okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully you did this. If you didn't, I will check in with you through email or something like that. Um, but yeah, so this is what I wanted you guys to do in your breakout rooms, which you can't do right now since this is just a recorded lecture. Um, but I, if you're on a team, or even if you're not on a team, you can come up with a team name. Um, if you're just by yourself, maybe I'll call you by your person, your your human name, or if you want a team name, you can make one up too. That's cool. Um, but if you are on a team, I, or if you do have multiple people that you're working with, come up with a team name so um, as a nice way to address everybody. Uh, also decide number two, when, where, or how you work and meet on the project. Right. So this class is not meant for you guys. Uh, if you just attend the class uh, and do the work during class time, you're not going to be able to get your project done. You need to have a second meeting time, um, either with just yourself or with yourself and the advisor or your teammates, um, to work on the project. Decide, uh, look at your weekly goals and things like that, and make sure you're making progress to get to where we need to be. We'll talk more about what how that should look next week, but uh, try to come up with a time that you guys can work together and meet with each other. Um, thirdly, if you're with other people, review your homework assignment that you did. So if you missed the lecture and you're on a team, uh, please do that uh, just so everyone can get on the same page. Maybe you can do it without the advisor too or just with the advisor is also okay. Um, fourth is brainstorm. So now that we've covered all the spaces, try to brainstorm and what is the problem that you're trying to solve. Right? And this is what I want you to turn in by next week. I think one week is good enough for you guys to uh, come up with uh, at least an initial problem statement. And this will be your first actual graded thing. Okay, So a problem statement should be about a paragraph. If you need some insight in how to write a problem statement, there's a link here uh, that I think is useful. It's for research, but for a design project too, I think it's very applicable. Um, but also include your team name if you have a team. Uh, and include the time that you're planning to meet or work on your project each week uh, on your own, right? Uh, on your own or with your team. Right? Uh, this will be due next week, Thursday, before the day before we meet for class, so I can review it before class. Um, yeah, that's it. So if I didn't get in contact with you during class, I'll probably send you guys out an email that you can respond with some information, just so I know you guys are on the same page. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, sorry about not recording the Zoom lecture. I will be better about that next time. So, yeah. See you guys.